Hello, everybody, and welcome to our sixth AgriTech Talk, an initiative of the Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia, led to inspire us all to think tech when designing and implementing our projects and programs across the region. My name is Veronika Sherva, and I am the Digital Agriculture Analyst and today's host. Get ready to dive into the exciting world of artificial intelligence and chat GBT, because today's AgriTech Talk is for us to really try to understand whether ChatGPT and technologies alike are going to revolutionize our work and agriculture. But before we start, let me quickly ask you, because I'm really curious, do you use ChatGPT in your work and for which purposes? Please answer in the open survey window and uh, be mindful that the results will be kept anonymous. Our special guest today is Padrón Marcelo Arias, economist at Rail, who will tell us about how to use ChatGPT, what potential in agriculture it has, and what are its limitations. Pedro, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Veronica, and good morning or afternoon to everyone. Um, Thank so, you, Pedro. So why is everyone talking about ChatGPT? Well, the just, short, yes? Just let me uh, Tell quickly that we'll have a timer, okay? So I'm gonna start a timer now for 12 okay. minutes. Okay. Okay, so we need to be very timely. So that's why we're using it. And we'll have 12 minutes and four questions uh, to be answered in, in this time, okay? Yeah, so, okay. Uh, let me start it quickly and ask my first question. Okay, you should be seeing it now. So Pedro, um, can you give us a little background on ChatGPT and uh, why is everybody talking about it? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll keep an eye on the watch. Uh, I'll do my best. Yeah, well, the short answer is, is because it's just amazing. I mean, uh, this is a, a program that passed an MBA, a medical degree, even degrees in law. Um, uh, um, I wrote somewhere in Teams, actually, that if you're not interested, it's only because you haven't tried it. So it's just chat GPT, Generative Pre-trained Transformer. I've been looking at this, and the difficult part for me to understand is the transformer bit. I think I, think I understand the generative and pre-trained part of it, and that helps me to understand why it does what it does and what it could do to me. So chat GPT is what is called a large language model. It was developed by OpenAI, which is a, an NGO. Uh, and so what is a, a language model? Well, in simple words, it's just a mathematical model of language. Instead of words, it uses numbers. It's a language of numbers, so to speak. So if I say, for example, food in English, alimento in Spanish, pasto in Italian. These are all different words, and yet they mean the same. I don't know how you say food in Hungarian, I apologize, or in Russian. But anyway, uh, the idea is why can't we use numbers instead? So, well, actually what the program does, it doesn't, transform language into numbers. They, they sort of, they, they, they describe this as tokens and the numbers are not actually numbers, it's, what they, it's called vectors. But those are technicalities and I'm not going into it. I am a user, so don't ask me. So GPT is then this, this model that was trained into a massive amount of data, books, articles, websites. It actually trained itself. It gets this cloud of data, analyzes it, assigns numbers, finds association between these numbers uh, or vectors. And it does this alone. This is the amazing thing. Huh? It's, it's its own teacher. This is what's called machine learning. The problem is, and somebody has been talking about this, is that nobody knows how much it knows. So some people are getting scared about these artificial intelligence things. So how does it work? I mean, you ask a question or a prompt, what's called a prompt, and JetGPT generates texts. For example, food security. 
it locks this concept, this vector in space, and starts to associate words that are related to food security. Uh, the transformative of GTPT, the transformative T transformative, is actually uh, what it does. It, it signifies that it actually focuses on something. So on the question that you put, you focus. You ask it to focus. So the question is very important. Um, this this comes from a paper that was developed in 2017, I mean, very recently. Uh, it's called Attention is All You Need. I read it. I didn't understand half of it. Anyway, I'm amazed. So I, I believe that ChatGPT is popular because it's just amazing. Anyone who uses it is amazed, including the developers. They say, the developers, that it does more than they ever imagined. So back to you. Uh, thank you, Pedro. Very useful to receive such a comprehensive background. And I see from our poll results that actually majority of our participants today have not used ChatGPT. So, you know, why don't we show them how to use it? Would you be able to do that? Sure. Let me just uh, accommodate my, my desk. Let's do that. Give it here. Um, let's open it. Uh, let's see, I need to share my screen, right? Share the screen. Uh, can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is this is what you get when you subscribe to it. You know, all you need, I think it's just a telephone number where they send you a code, it's free. They, they ask people to work on it and uh, because they are testing it and if the information here is feeding other language models. So this is this interest from them to do this. So let's log in and see if we are lucky. Oops. Let's try, let's try again, continue. Okay, we are in. So I'll, I'll explain to you how I use this. Since this has all the text that has been fed into the internet, including that, so the FAO actually has read this, the FAO strategic framework, that's to give you an idea. So you can think in terms of the strategic framework. I use this as a research tool, as a research tool. One of my difficulties, and I'm sure this is for everyone, is when you're preparing a project and you're doing the log frame, you have between the log frame assumptions that you need to make in the logical framework for the activities that you're going to do. So let's explore these this, uh, assumptions. So let's see. Hello there. Hello. How can I assist you today? So there, we started to talk with this thing, with this beast. Um, can you, can we talk about assumptions of low frames in projects? Doesn't, you don't even need to to write it correctly, it has a spell check. So it, it, it understands even the language that, uh, that you're using. Sure, it says. Uh, so it goes into a long explanation of what log frames are. And you know sometimes it just goes for too long and gives you more text than you asked for. Because this is what it has it's been generated. It, it's been, it's, its objective is to generate text on this particular issue. Now you have to go back here. This is important. Huh? Assumptions, log frames, and projects. This is where I told you that it's going to look at that space. With this prompt, with this question, I'm already telling it. It's about projects. Within projects, it's about the log frames. And within the log frames, it's about the assumptions. So with this question, I already locked this conversation because it remembers what you asked before. I locked this conversation in these three pillars here project low frame assumptions. 
and we're going to talk about this, right? So I find it very hard to identify the assumptions of one of my, of the activities of my project. Can you help me? Of course, identifying assumptions can sometimes be challenging. <laughs> this is just fantastic. I mean, it just throw back to you what you expect, but yeah. But then it goes on and on again. I mean, this happens always. I mean, it's good in a sense that it gives you all this uh, because that's exactly what I need to think about the assumptions, right? So the what if risk independence, so what? Yeah, so it already starts to generate um, uh, issues that could be related to assumptions. So if I say, how about regulatory uh, and policy environment? Would that be a key assumption for a project, for an activity that aims to integrate the farmers into a global market? So that's the one I'm worried about. As everybody knows, we want to put smallholders in contact. I'm an economist. I want to put smallholders in contact with markets, right? And I want to say, well, if I do this, what, what, am, I, what am I assuming? Yeah? What am I assuming that, uh, that pretend that this is actually ever going to work, right? Yes, the regulatory and policy environment can indeed be a key assumption of an activity that aims to integrate smallholders. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to look at all the, not, if not all, the most probable issues that surround that discourse that has been going around on uh, integrating smallholders into action, into, into markets. I could even go deeper in here. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with this, eh? complying with social and environmental standards, supportive institution and framework, stable and favorable trade policies, compliance with export and import regulations. This is exactly the kind of issues that we look into the FAO. So it's just, I mean, it's mind boggling what this, this thing is doing, right? It's, it's gone through that space of a text, which I asked it to look, and starts to spell out all the issues that go around it. Of course, then I might be interested to say, okay, I can see that my project is highly risky huh, to the policy environment because the policy environment is not, is not secure. So I say, what, what could I do to mitigate the risks? And this conversation can go on and on and on. And to me, it helps me very much. I mean, it's incredible. It helps me to, get my ideas through to understand issues and concepts in very, very depth, very, uh, very, very uh, in-depth. Well, yeah, I'm sure Jack GTP will tell me the, the correct language and how to express this. Back to you, Veronica. Thank you, Pedro. Um, very interesting. So you basically use it as a way to bounce back your ideas, you know, to um, reflect on some of your ideas and so on. So what do you think are other potential use cases? Um, and you know, um, importantly, what are the limitations of chat GPT that we should take into account? Right, that's a good question. I think that it's important to understand the basic features of chat GPT uh, so that you understand what you can do and the potentials, yeah. Uh, th this uh, chat GT GPT was trained in data until 2021. So it doesn't have anything from 2022 or 2023. The other thing is that whatever you write in, 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 in ChatGPT is stored by the NGO, by OpenAI, for the purpose of training future generations of GPT. Yeah? So you have to be careful what you put in it. 
our colleagues in Rome don't have access to GPT. No, it was locked because of that. Because whatever information Italians put is going to be stored somewhere. You know, sort of privacy laws and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so another thing that we need to understand is a large language model. So its sole objective in life is to generate text based on a prompt. It's larger than life. So if it doesn't understand something, it bullshits. Huh? It generates text, generates text. If it doesn't know something, it just tells you anything. So you have to be very careful. And you have to know your subject. And that's how I use it to the research. I know what I'm talking about. And I know when it's bullshitting me, right? It's, it's just my French. Uh, so it's a language model. It doesn't do math or logic, though sometimes you wonder, you know? Uh, Katrina actually uh, was, was sharing a, 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 a video um, that researchers uh, are beginning to think that actually it does. It does a lot of uh, reasoning already. Not chat GPT, but the next one with GPT-4, which is, is there. Um, and as I said, I mean, the secret of using it properly is in the question, in the prompt. Huh? You want a good answer, you ask the right question. If you know, don't know how to ask, if you don't know the prompt, then ask GPT itself. Could you please help me to formulate my question? I mean, just take a minute to think about this again. Eh? You ask GPT to help you to formulate the question for what you want to get. So chat GPT can be used in many ways. It's difficult for me to explain. Uh, I think the, the only way really is uh, by using it. Uh, you use it and you will realize then what is can be useful. Uh, and again, I'm sorry about our colleagues in Rome, but I, there's just so many language models out there that are going to be available. I think it's only a matter of time before they, they give it access again. Back to you. Thanks, Pedro. Indeed, we shared in the chat uh, some link to discover other uh, language models. So dear participants, feel free to explore. So we run a little bit out of time. So let me ask just our last question. Yeah. Uh, which is, um, you know, is ChatGPT being used today in any application, including for agriculture? And do you think it will disrupt um, the sector and our work in the future? Mm. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, because it's just a language model. And yes, it's been it's been already used with other applications. Um, Wolfram Alpha, for example. One of the difficulties is it doesn't compute. Right. So if you add this language, which asks another model to do the computations for it and gives you back the answer, that's that it can do. It has that potential. And in agriculture at the moment, uh, I think it's just for research purposes. But I can see a future where you ask a text, a question, you know, is linked to, for example, I don't know, let's say, uh, uh, remote sensing. Yeah. A remote sensing where you have a map and then you ask, is it, uh, tell me about La Nina is over now, El Nino is coming up, what's going to be the crop prospects for uh, Kazakhstan this winter? And it will go into remote sensing, knows how to analyze it, sends you back. You don't have to be a researcher, you know, you just have a language, a dialogue with this, with this text without having the need to go in deep into understanding the issues. But as I said, you need to be an expert, really, to make the most of it. So yes, it has potentials, it's good, but it's also it's bad if you don't know how to use it or what it can do. I use it for research, that's what I do. I hear some people are using it for editorial purposes, for translation, to write speeches, uh, computer programs. Uh, so yeah, many uses. Back to you. Thanks, thanks, Pedro. Um, so let me see if there are any questions from the audience. I, I have been monitoring chat. Are there any questions, concerns? Thanks, Anything Pedro. Our participants? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pedro. Thanks, Veronica. Um, thank you for these informative responses, Pedro. Um, actually, we have um, a few questions in the chat, um, and I will read out one of them due to time constraints. So there is one that says, does it ever, uh, does this, meaning um, ChatGPT, ever give uh, nonsense answers? If yes, so that means that the, it must not be very reliable. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I don't trust it. 
I personally don't trust it. You know, as I said, it helps me to think through the issues. That's what it does. It's not going to do my work. It's not going, I mean, the fear out there that it's going to replace workers, knowledge workers, not yet, maybe in the future. I use it as a, a to bounce ideas, to get ideas, to explore issues. And as I said, if he doesn't know something, it bullshits. So you have to be careful. I personally don't trust it. Okay, so there might, we must take mitigating measures, double check the information, right? And uh, always adhere to some trusted sources. Yes, of course. I mean, you have to, you have to be, uh, know your subject, you know? Uh, it's very imaginative, you know? Uh, so it can, it can go into unexplored territories, which is, is good in a way, because, you know, that issue about you know, parallel thinking and so on. So yeah, I think it's, I, I mean, to me, I say, I don't trust everything it tells me, no, but it's very good to talk to, to explore an issue for sure. Okay, well, I definitely agree with you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. It was really gro great to learn from you about uh, this application, its potential, and also its limitations. Um, we maybe did in just a little bit, about 20 minutes. So thank you very much. Sure. Uh, I hope that people uh, get the interest in chat GPT. I think that you should use it. And it's coming. I mean, GPT-4, uh, trust GPT, like Elon Musk is coming up. Um, uh, there is the other one by Google, uh, name escapes me, Bard is coming Bard. up as well. Bard. Right. Bard, yeah, uh, which is in the United States and, and, and the UK, I think, is not released by, by for other countries. Uh, uh, and there are just hundreds. It's going, to be, it's going to be a whole ecosystem of these things. And uh, FAO will probably jump into it by creating its own GPT with all the basic texts and everything that has been published by the FAO that people working in the FAO can refer to, right? I can see that happening soon and it should be done probably. That would be very yeah, interesting. That's actually a very good idea. Yeah. We can take it from here, from this conversation. <laughs> okay. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you.